Hi, I'm Mike Fargione, Manager of Field Research and Outdoor Programs at the Cary Institute of Ecosystem Studies. Here today I'm on the Cary property in a red maple swamp. We're looking at two common tree species, sugar maple and red maple. Both are prized for their aesthetic values, like the shade they provide in summer and their beautiful fall leaf colors. But each species also plays a different but important ecological role in our natural communities. Each species also differs in its commercial uses. For instance, the wood from sugar maple is valued for fine cabinetry, for musical instruments, and even baseball bats. Red maple, on the other hand, the wood from that is often used for less expensive products, such as shipping crates and pallets. Being able to identify these two species can help you make informed decisions about which trees you might want to cut in your woodlot for firewood, or which you may want to tap when making maple syrup. So today I'm going to give you some hints on how to tell sugar maple from red maple in the winter. Identifying deciduous trees in winter using leaves you find on the ground underneath them is not a reliable method. A more accurate way is to examine a combination of bud, twig, and bark characteristics of the tree in question. Here in the northeastern United States, maples, ashes, and a few shrubs and small trees have their buds arranged in pairs on each side of a twig. Maples and ash are the only native species that have this opposite bud arrangement that do grow big enough to become dominant trees in a forest. Sugar maple buds are slender, sharply pointed, and brown. Look closely and you may see eight or more visible scales on each bud. Flowers form from some of these buds once they open and the leaves appear. Twigs of sugar maple are slender, shiny, and the color of maple syrup. In contrast, red maples have oval or round buds. They're reddish, blunt, and usually show six or fewer visible bud scales. In this photograph, the bottom twig has mostly small vegetative buds, which will open and produce leaves and new shoots. Larger flower buds, which are more obvious in the top twig, are present throughout the winter and open before vegetative buds. Twigs of red maples often have a reddish tinge, just like the buds. The bark of young sugar maples is gray and smooth. As the tree grows older, the bark may start to crack looking something like old dried paint. As the tree gets even older, the bark becomes furrowed into long irregular strips. Often these strips lift away at one edge only. The young bark of red maples is also gray and smooth. As it gets older, it may develop randomly distributed vertical cracks. As the tree matures more, the bark gets darker and the cracks become consistent and form multiple layers of long vertical plate-like strips. The outer layers on old trees can become shaggy or scaly and the bark may actually flake off if you rub your hands across it. So that's a quick guide to help you tell the difference between two of our most common native maple species. Both red and Sugar maples are increasing in abundance and in some cases are replacing oaks and other native trees in our region's forests. But that's a story for another day. Until then, look for more videos and information about ecological topics, programs, and resources on our website.